Hello, I am Akash, a fourth year B.Tech Electrical Engineering student at IIT Tirupati. Myself and Siddhan Mohan would be doing a paper presentation on a computer vision domain of object detection with discriminatively trained part-based models. This research paper was written by these four gentlemen and was published in IEEE Transactions on Pattern Analysis and Machine Intelligence in the year 2010. It has about more than 9,000 citations. Object detection has been one of the major challenges in computer vision. This paper considers the problem of detection and localization of generic objects, that is objects belonging to a generic class, such as persons or cars in static images. As simple as it may sound, there are quite a few challenges arising due to image variations, like variations in viewpoint, where image is taken from different angles, variation in illumination, in which image is taken in different lighting conditions, and non-rigid deformation arising due to say different poses taken by a person in an image. Also, intra-class variability arising due to shapes and color of the same object. This paper presents an object detection system that represents highly variable objects using mixtures of multiscale deformable part models. The paper claims that the system achieves state-of-the-art results on the Pascal VOC and INRIA person datasets. Here are some of the sample images from the datasets used. Sample images shown above are from the Pascal VOC dataset comprising of pictures of bus, car, cat, chair, cow, etc. While the images from the INRIA person dataset includes persons with different poses. Pictorial structures. Pictorial structures are a method for representing objects in images as a collection of parts arranged in a deformable configuration. As we can see here, the person in different poses can be structured as collection of parts, that is limbs, head, chest, in a deformable configuration. Each part captures local appearance properties of an object, while the deformable configuration is characterized by spring-like connections between certain pairs of parts. Each spring has a deformation cost with respect to an ideal root pictorial structure. To explain this, Let's say that we want to de detect this person in the image. But also imagine there is another person in the same image. Now there is a possibility that the head of this person is detected while the hand of the other person is detected. Well, this is not expected. This, is, this will be taken care by the deformation cost, which will be significantly high if the two parts are far away from the ideal root pictorial structure as in this case, this person. The paper adopts feature pyramid approach. Let's say we have an image. The image pyramid is obtained by continuous smoothing and subsampling to get images at different resolutions. And for this image pyramid, corresponding feature pyramid is obtained. Pixel-wise feature map is obtained from every level of the image pyramid and this is called the feature pyramid. The feature pyramid used in this paper uses a modified version or a variation of histogram of oriented gradients as features. This variation of HOG is similar to Dalal Triggs object detection system. In order to detect objects, a score for a filter is computed. Let us see how is this done. Let us consider a filter of size W cross H and let H be the feature pyramid. Let P be the position of the pixel in the Lth level of the feature pyramid which is represented by P X comma Y comma L. Phi of H comma P comma W comma H denotes the vector obtained by reshaping the W cross H subwindow of the feature matrix into a WH cross 1 vector, thereby flattening the feature matrix subwindow into a row major order. The score of the filter F 
at the position P would be F prime into five. Here F prime is the transpose of the flattened filter matrix, which has a shape of one cross W H and that multiplied by phi would yield us a scalar value, which gives us the score of filter F at that particular position and scale within the image. And further, we will see that the score is calculated for different types of filters at various positions in the image feature pyramid and the maximum score is chosen to detect the object of interest. Well, this equation incorporates the model. A deformable part model. The object class to be detected is represented as a pictorial structure of localized and deformable subparts. For example, if we consider object class as person, then it is represented by the subparts like the limbs, head, etc. Two types of filters are used to obtain scores root filters and part filters. Root filters approximately covers an entire object to be detected and is defined by detection window. The higher resolution part filters cover smaller part of the object. These part filters are placed lambda levels down in the feature pyramid from where the root filters are applied so that the features at that level are computed at twice the resolution of the features in the root level filter. This helps in capturing finer resolution features that are localized to greater accuracy. As an example, the root filter could capture coarse resolution edges such as face boundary, while the part filters could capture details such as eyes, nose and mouth. A model for an object with n parts is formally defined by n plus two tuple consisting of F0, P1 to Pn and D, where F0 is a root filter, Pi is a model for the ith filter part and B is a real valued bias term. Each part model is defined by a three tuple consisting of Fi, Bi, Di, where Fi is a filter for the ith part, Vi is a two dimensional vector specifying an anchor position for part I relative to the root position and di is a four dimensional vector specifying coefficients of a quadratic function defining a deformation cost for each possible placement of the part relative to the anchor position. An object hypothesis specifies the location of each filter in the model in a feature pyramid Z which is P0 to Pn where Pi specifies the level and position of the ith filter. We require that the level of each part is such that the feature map at that level was computed at twice the resolution of the root level. The score of the hypothesis is given by the scores of each filter at their respective locations minus a deformation cost that depends on the relative position of each part with respect to the root and a bias term where dx where phi of dx comma dy is dx dy dx square dy square gives a displacement of the ith part relative to its anchor position and dxi comma diy equals dx xi comma yi minus two times x naught comma y naught plus vi are the deformation features. Note, if di is 0, 0, 1, 1, the deformation cost for the ith part is the squared distance between its actual position and its anchor position relative to the root. In general, the deformation cost is an arbitrary separable quadratic function of the displacements. The bias term is introduced in the score to make the scores of multiple models comparable when we combine them in a mixture model. The score of a hypothesis Z can be expressed in terms of a dot product of beta and psi between a vector of model parameters beta and a vector psi. Here beta is consisting of the root filters and their corresponding uh, coefficients of the 
a function for end deformation cost and a bias term. The psi is a function which consists of the feature vectors and the displacement of the different parts relative to its anchor position. Thank you, Akash. My name is Siddhan. So as we've discussed so far, you will know that the score of Z, which is B times phi of H comma Z, simply represents how likely is it that an object which we're looking for is at a particular position Z. So now I would like to tell you as to how we're going to use this score to find the most likely position. So we have a score of Z, which is calculated for a given for a given possible object location. So within that object location, within that object root location, the parts may be placed in any position. So how so how do we find which is the most likely root location? So how it how it is done is that. So for a particular root location P0, the score is maximized for the positions of all the parts P1 to Pn. So the idea is to obtain the highest possible value of the score P0, of score P0 for a given object at a root location and where the parts, the position of the parts can be rearranged within the root location of the object. And if we do that, then we will be able to obtain the highest likelihood of each part being at a particular position for the corresponding root location. So this score P0 is now calculated for every such point P0 in the overall image. So using that, we're able to tell as to if the object was at this position, then which part would, then uh, what is the most likely configuration of its parts? And on the basis of that, we'll get a, We'll evaluate the objective function which will also have the deformation costs and all. So, the uh, and then when we look at the scores, we will observe that the high scoring root locations, the places where the score of P0 turns to be high, is are more likely to contain the object. So, because it means that the deformation cost is low and the parts are as close to the normal position as possible, as close to the root position as possible, and therefore the location of the parts which are yielding a high scoring root location define the complete object hypothesis. So the advantage about this method is that by detecting an overall score for each root location, which also contains the uh, score for the corresponding parts as well as the permission, we are able to detect multiple instances of an object within a uh, multiple instances of a particular part of an object within the root. So we use dynamic programming and generalized distance transforms, also known as mini convolutions, to compute the best locations for the parts as a function of the root location. So this is just a summary of what we've discussed so far. So I'll, I'll take you through it. So what happens is that here you can see is an image which contains two persons. So the object detector is now going to detect these two persons and their corresponding parts, which include head, the shoulder, the legs, and so on. So how it happens is that this image is fed into the object detector, which first calculates the feature map for that object. So the feature which is used is the variant of the HOG, of the histogram of, or histogram of gradient feature. And that feature map is calculated at various resolutions, so which are known as feature pyramids. So they are uh, the feature map is calculated at various resolutions, and the feature uh, and then into one of the feature maps, the uh, it is convolved with the root filter. And when a particular feature map gets convolved with the root filter, it means that to the feature map which is at twice the resolution of this feature map, the part filters get convolved with that. So we get a root filter response here, and we get these many part filter responses. So we observed that a transformation is carried out on the part filter responses. Why is it carried out? It's because we need to also account for some spatial uncertainty and some flexibility in finding the position of the object so that 
some leeway is there. So therefore, the uh, of, the part filter responses are transformed in such a manner that they are now able to account for and uh, they are able to bring in that flexibility. And then once the transformation is done, then they are all added together. So the root filter response and the transform responses of all the part filters are added together. And what is also added together is the deformation costs associated with each part. So when these three terms are added together, we get the objective function, which is the combined score of the root location. So now this combined score of root location is calculated at each and every root location within the given image. And then using that, we are able to get the, the most likeliest positions where the uh, where the image where the object could be present within the image, which is the position which have a high value of uh, filter response values, which have a high value of the objective function. So as you can see, this method has worked well on this image here because the two persons have been detected and their subparts have also been detected. So to a to a great deal of accuracy. And these are the filters which were used for that purpose. So this is a root filter which was used to detect the person an object belonging to class person. And these were the, the subpart filters which were used. So this was the part filter for a head, for legs, and so on. And then this also represents the part which deformation cost as to how much cost is incurred when the, uh, uh, the certain parts are deformed in some manner. So this is a pictorial representation of that. So now I'll talk about mixture models. So now if the aim is to detect more than one object or object objects belonging to more than one type of category in the same image, then mixture models can be used to do that. So a mixture model just simply contains many components. So a component means that a detection system which can detect a particular object category. So uh, the many components will be present within a mixture model. So now what happens is that the, the uh, equation for calculating the score beta into psi of h comma z is the same for the mixture model compared to the single component model. So assuming that it contains m components, mixture model contains m components, then simply the beta for the mixture model is the concatenation of the individual betas for each of the m components. And then the psi of the overall mixture model is a sparse vector, which contains the psi function only for those of objects which are actually present in the image and for the other comp and for other components the value is zero so what we see is that when these two are multiplied so the score of z simply reduces to this expression which is beta c times psi h comma z dash which is basically only if the cf component is present in the image so then all other uh, the functions reduce to zero so uh, this is our mixture model works so now I'll talk about how a model parameters can be set. By, by that, I mean the how to set the filter values, the root filter values and the part filter values. So we talked about how they could be used for detecting the whether the, the presence of a person as well as the presence of a head, of a legs, and so on. So how are those values set? So this is done by training a latent support vector machine, also known as SPM, on a portion of the Pascal VOC data set, where the object positions are already annotated. So the well, a latent SPM is simply a modified version of the classical SPM. So how a classical SPM works is that you have some samples in some uh, n-dimensional space and uh, which are which belong to different classes. And the aim is to draw a decision boundary between them, which separates them into multiple classes while ensuring that the error is minimal. So for that, the classical SPM just it just takes into account the relative positions of the various uh, of the of the various samples belonging to different classes and. Uh, cost function is formulated with some with a margin between the decision boundary and the samples. So the latent SPM works in a similar manner, but the only modification in it is that the cost function is not calculated upon samples, but it is rather calculated upon the latent values. The latent values meaning the, the positions of the part values or the positions of the part filters within the image. So that is unknown at the start and that gets modified over time. So on the basis of the position of the part on the other basis of the position of the part values within the object in the training data which we have the on the latent values are calculated and on the based on those latent values the latent spm is trained and that helps give us the values of the root and part filters because when we train that network because when we train that system then we'll be able to obtain the root and part filters which 
which, which are which are able to detect the uh, the persons the, the training data in the best possible manner so this is how that works so also in a latent spm the maximization occurs over the latent part so maximization over the latent part locations or uh, the occurs as opposed to marginalizing over them which means that instead of taking a margin with respect to the latent part locations the idea is to maximize uh, the overall objective function so the values of the latent part locations are the updated in that manner and the hinge loss rather than log loss is used in training so now using a data mining algorithm where the detective detector is discriminately fed hard positive and hard negatives the values of the filters are tuned so what happens here is that to train a spm require positive and negative samples so but if the but it takes a long time in it would take a long time to train since the, these are huge images so what so what is done is that only the hard positives images which contain the objects and hard negatives images which absolutely do not contain the objects and have nothing resembling that are are fed to the uh, are fed to the system and then it discrimin discriminatively learns from that and then it is able to distinguish between the positive and the negative and thus it is now able to find the uh, find the objects within the given image so this works well for the large data sets and also stochastic gradient descent is the algorithm which is used for updating the filter values so now the i want to talk about the feature map which is which was calculated at the start from the input image so what was the feature which was being used it was basically a modified version of hog the histogram of oriented gradients so how that works is that the x and y gradients are calculated at every pixel in the image so that would simply be the difference between intensities of adjacent pixels so for x gradient you would calculate the distance between horizontally adjacent the in intensity difference between horizontally adjacent pixels and for y gradient you would calculate the intensity difference between vertically adjacent pixels and then that is found at every point and then at every point we also calculate the magnitude r which is the square root of the sum of squares and the orientation which is the angle between them so the angle and the magnitude of the gradient is calculated and then the um, orientation is now discretized into total one out of a total of p values so since we have it's a tan inverse function we will usually get a real number but that gets discretized into one out of a total of p values so we are essentially dividing all the results into p bits so and this is calculated using two types of functions a contrast sensitive or contrast insensitive function and it has been observed that both of them work for different types of images so in a so for example contrast sensitive function works for some type of images and contrast insensitive works better for some other type of images so both are needed and what is done is that for every, for the pixels that belong to you know which have the intensity you know, which have the orientation within within a particular bin so they are uh, so now so now what happens is that a separate feature map is made for every discretization level so which means that for in a, a feature map is made in which only those pixels which have the orientation as 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 a particular value of p for example 4 so orientation map is made where only the pixels with value of 4 are displayed and all other pixels are shown as zero and then another map is made where for example pixels with orientation value of 5 are displayed and all others are set to 0 so similarly total of p such feature maps are created and all are concatenated along with third dimension so we get a total of p maps here which in which each map contains only those pixels as non zero which have the, the that particular orientation intensity as a and that value so then what about the, uh, the hog for a group of neighboring pixels is aggregated generally by averaging to obtain a hog feature map c based on cells which are a group of pixels so this aggregation it provides invariance to fault deformation to small deformations so and then since the values of the cell feature map are truncated so what happens is that all values which are exceeding a threshold are set at the value of the threshold and then they are normalized in four different ways followed by concatenation so the paper takes value p equal to 9 which means that the nine bins are taken and for each bin each feature map within a bin Uh, it, it, it is is normalized in four different ways so we get a total of uh, 36 values so it is represented as a 9 cross 4 matrix and this is the hog feature is obtained from here and this is the feature map 
9 cross 4 matrix corresponding to each pixel which is now fed into the you know, for, for further processing so on which the root filter and all are um, convolved with so what also what has been observed is that the when the 9 cross 4 matrix is converted to 36 dimensional vector it is uh, and then principal component analysis is applied pca so pca essentially means that we are finding we are trying to preserve only those components which have uh, and which, which will ensure that we can retain the maximum number of information. So the idea is to reduce. Uh, so the idea is to remove components, so to re to reduce storage space and to re reduce computational complexity while at the same time retaining as much information as possible. So it is observed that if we, if, even if we reduce a 36-dimensional vector to 11-dimensional vector, even uh, provided 11 principal components are used, we are able to uh, maintain the accuracy to a reasonable level, which is pretty good. And this greatly reduces the complexity and the time taken for the computer to detect objects. So now, using the object detection system, now uh, once we can find the bounding boxes for the subparts as well as the overall object. And what is done is that the uh, the uh, it is up, uh, the uh, uh, system was applied on the Pascal VOC dataset and it was used to draw bounding boxes around the detected objects. So the while trying to draw the bounding box around the detected object, so they, the, the researchers thought whether uh, that it, it would be better to use the bounding boxes of the subparts obtained in some manner so that we can use it to give a much more better estimate of the bounding box of the entire object. As you can see, this is the root location uh, root location detection here. So only this much part of the car is incorporated, this part is removed. But once they've incorporated the subparts data in it, then we find that a much more better bounding box for the car is obtained. So this is one advantage of using this method, which basically tunes the uh, the bounding box boundaries such that using the subpart boundaries. So this is done using a linear least squares regression model. So and it works well. So this is one thing which the, the which the researchers did, and the, as you can see, the results are here. So this is the base model, for, for which is where the precision scores are shown for each category, bike, bus, or car, and so on of the Pascal VOC data set. And what we observe is that the the, the, the result is state of the art uh, for the time in which the paper was published. And now this is the base model. And then when the boundary boxes are improved with the help of the subparts, then we can see that the uh, precision improves slightly. And then when a context rescoring is used. So in context rescoring, the, uh, the they apply further probabilistic methods to improve the uh, to improve the bounding boxes. The accuracy improves even further. And then we observe that the results for the 2007 uh, Pascal VOC database as well. And these are the curves, the precision recall curves which are drawn for the uh, for a particular class, person and car in the year 2006. And, and you can see how the training occurred through this. And these numbers represent the average precision to score for each model. So you can see this. Yeah. So to conclude, this object detection system for Utilizing discriminatively trained part based models was created, and it is a very efficient method for matching deformable models to images. And it is especially useful detection of object classes having deformable parts or high intra class variability. And another advantage of this is that if we create a filter which can detect windshield in a car, for example, the same uh, filter can now be used for detecting trucks, the windshield in trucks, for example. So the filters now obtained are transferable across different applications because of their general nature. So we are able to isolate different aspects of a particular object and we can utilize them for further applications. So, and it also helps us in drawing hierarchical structures of objects, which is really good. So, and these are the references we used while making this presentation. And we hope that all of you liked it and learned something from it. So if you have any comments or feedback or questions, so please do write in the comments. So thank you.